So you know how when you go on an airplane, there's like a, a size limit for your carry-on bag? Like it has to fit in this certain bin because the carry-on has to go above everyone where they're sitting. Because you can, you can wear a backpack or like a, a briefcase and stick it under the seat. But um, in order to accommodate everyone's bags, you have to have your, you know, your duffel, your little wheelie one or whatever, be a certain size. And um, there's always someone who goes and tries to fit one that's far too large. And sometimes that's okay. Like if it's not a very full flat, yeah, you can still fit it in the bin, even if it doesn't fit in the little like dimension thing. Uh, but on a more full flight, sometimes airlines will make you stick your bag in the measure thing. And if it doesn't fit, you have to check it and they'll charge you for checking it because you were trying to sneak a bag that's too big in. If it's like just barely and, and you know, maybe you can like smush it together a little bit and fit it in, they're probably more okay with it. But if it's far too big, then they're not. And when that happens, the people who are trying to get a, a bag that's too big on the airplane for free, they get mad. Even though they were the ones doing the thing that they shouldn't do, they're mad that they got caught. Um, another example of the same thing, uh, my dad was telling me about um, this woman came in, it was with, with a group of people, and was just complaining about how she just got a speeding ticket and how mean the cops are and don't they have better things to do and on and on and on. And he eventually got sick of it and asked her, were you speeding? And she got flustered. She's like, well, yes. So again, she was doing something wrong, but got mad that she was caught. She was mad at the other people. She wasn't saying, oh, I was speeding that was bad. It was always someone else's fault. On a more extreme example, you know, this could be someone like, you know, the CEO of Enron or Bernie Madoff, who not mad at what they did, not any sort of remorse over that they stole money from a bunch of people and ruined lives, but they're just upset that they got caught. This is kind of a continuous drama in human history. It goes all the way back to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. So they've just disobeyed God. They didn't trust him as a loving father. They thought that these rules that he put in were to limit them because that was the lie that the devil fed them. And so they reached out and disobeyed. And so now God's walking around the garden and doesn't see Adam. And so God asks, where are you? Which is kind of a, a pointless question. He's God. He knows where Adam is. But he wants Adam to own up to it. He's giving Adam a chance to fess up. But Adam doesn't. He says, uh, I was scared because I was naked, so I hid. And so, again, it's, it's not admitting to the fact that this thing was wrong. So the reason I bring all this up is that all of it connects to heaven and hell. Um, there's Sometimes people will ask the question, can people in hell repent? And then get to heaven. You know, a quick answer is no, because if people could come out of hell, then they could fall out of heaven, and then heaven would cease to be heaven, hell would cease to be hell. Another answer, um, it would be that once we die, our will is fixed. Like here on earth, our will is changeable. Like we could pick this thing, and then all oh, that was bad, pick this other thing. Um, but at our death, our whole lives will have been a choice, and so we've made our choice. But the way Thomas Aquinas explains it, is he says that when we talk about repenting of something, there's two senses that we can repent of something. So we can repent of it in itself or repent of it because of its consequences. And so repenting of something in itself would be saying, you know, a person going up to a professor saying, I cheated on this test. Uh, I know that was wrong. I'm really sorry. And I know this hurt you. So that would be repenting in itself, saying cheat, the act of cheating on this test was wrong. Repenting because of the consequences would be the professor catches the person and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Um, actually, they wouldn't even say I shouldn't have done that. They're just upset that, um, that they got caught. So um, the way Aquinas says that in hell, that um, there's only that second kind of repentance, the repentance because of the punishment, but not repentance because of the thing itself. So basically those in hell um, are not sorry for what they did. They want to keep doing it and they're like the little kid with a hand caught in the cookie jar saying, uh, uh no, I didn't eat any cookies, upset that they're having to face the consequences. And so the lesson that we can draw from that is, um, you know, Advent is the season of preparation for Christmas and uh, Jesus message throughout, uh, throughout his preaching, uh, repent, but also forgiveness, because when you repent, you receive forgiveness, mercy, you know, we just finished the year of mercy. So it can be a little bit of a gut check. Why am I, um, why am I asking for this repentance? Is it because of the consequences? Is it because I got caught? 
or is it because I know this thing is wrong or I know this thing hurts other people?